In Gaza, fighting between Israel and Hamas is intensifying. At the moment, the north of Gaza is seeing some of the fiercest battles of the war so far. In the south, hundreds of thousands are fleeing fighting in the city of Rafah. For them, there is little shelter to run to. There is no end to grief and desperation in Gaza. Relatives are mourning victims of another attack outside a hospital in the city of Deir al-Bala. It hit a nearby refugee camp. My uncle's house was targeted last night. It was directly hit. There were only civilians in the house. It was hit in a barbaric way by the Israeli army. I lost my grandmother, my uncle and my aunt in this barbaric attack. These are civilians. What did they do wrong? Being killed or wounded is not the only danger that Palestinian civilians are facing across the territory. Their daily struggle is to find food, water and other basic supplies. Life is unbearable. There is no water. We bring water from near the sea. We walk five to six kilometers and bring four to five containers of water and it's built on the road. These trucks are transporting much-needed aid that's been delivered through a U.S.-built pier in central Gaza. Aid groups say it's nowhere near enough for a ravaged territory on the verge of famine. We need water. We need food. We need a decent life to live. We want to return to our homes. We want tents. We find nothing to live in. All countries live a decent life except us. Almost the entire population of Gaza is dependent on humanitarian aid to survive. But Israel's restrictions on aid deliveries are still in place. And the fighting continues. Israeli operations in the southern city of Rafah have been in the spotlight recently. But the patterns of violence and struggle for life are repeating themselves across the territory. I'm joined now by Balik Sladin, a journalist in Tel Aviv. Balik, I wonder what's the Israeli government's response been to the pictures we're seeing, the pictures the world are seeing from Gaza right now? Well, at least officially, according to the coordinator of government activities in the territory, which is the body that is responsible for the delivery of the aid, uh, 160,000 liters of fuel and diesel, as well as food and medicine, uh, went through uh, went enter entering Gaza through the temporary pier. Uh, the body is also saying that uh, 1,000 trucks entered Gaza Strip through the Karen Shalom crossing in the south, and also the newly uh, opened Ares West uh, crossing in the north. Uh, today, France also announced that uh, uh, they are uh, or they have delivered uh, aid to Arabia that is following other countries, of course. But still, uh, perfect, of course, and we've heard that. But from people that I talk to, and also from the photos and videos that we see, the markets, at least in the central part of Gaza Strip, which is Deir el Balah, uh, where the humanitarian uh, area should be, has now sufficient amounts of food. Thus, the prices are down again. That's what they are telling me at least. Uh, but there are two problems that the, the Israeli government is dealing with right now. First of all, the fact that the Egyptian doesn't want to open the Rafah crossing, that doesn't want uh, trucks to enter through that crossing, which is a major thing. And also, the activists that block the way of trucks that drive through Israel and even burn them uh, uh, and take also the aid because they don't believe that aid should be delivered to the Gazans and to Hamas. Uh, moving on, former Defence Minister Benny Gantz uh, has threatened to resign from Israel's war cabinet unless concrete plans for post-war Gaza uh, are made. What leverage does he have at this point? Well, I guess this is major news in Israel. It basically means that the unity government is in the brink of collapse. Netanyahu doesn't want it to, of course, because he is very comfortable on the current situation. It is very comfortable politically, but it's also every decision that he takes right now will be actually described as a decision for the unity government, and it's not a political decision or not. Well, I just need to um, address that doesn't mean, like if Gantz actually leaves in three weeks, it doesn't mean that the Netanyahu government will collapse immediately. After all, he has 40, uh, 64, excuse me, members. Uh, and it definitely, but it does definitely mean uh, that this is beginning of the end because 
Gallant and Edelstein, the defense minister and other members, could also be against the Netanyahu government, and this shrinks the whole coalition to 62, which mm-hmm. means that the if the uh, demonstrations did intensify after such a move, we could have seen uh, an early election in Israel. Balik Sladin, thanks so much.